Hello students, I am Tanmoy. I welcome you all in my channel Chemistry and Mystery of Molecules. So today we will discuss a transformation and along with that a important methodology. Okay. So what is the transformation? That is diol to alkene. Previously I have discussed alkene to diol. Okay, so it's a reverse. Uh, I believe such type of transformation and reagents it is better to remember because this is the simplest example I have given, but in question some different ex examples have given, but chemistry is same and it may ask what is the product. So if you know it, it will be easier for you to find out what will be the product because question answers are MCQ. So if you try to solve all the questions step by step, it is very difficult to finish the question paper within a particular time. So it is better to know if you can know instantly you can tick mark on the MCQ, it will be better. Okay, so we will discuss uh, today about this 1 to dial to alkyl conversion. So today's talk will cover few points like importance of this reaction, mechanism of this reaction, driving force of this reaction and another thing at the end we will discuss another part of this application of this methodology that is C-cyclooctin to trans cycloactin conversion. Why this is important? Previously I have discussed in another video, C-cyclin to trans -alkin. Apparently it looks like C-cyclin to trans -alkin. But in case of cyclic system, getting transalkene is difficult and importance is that this reaction is so much selective, it is capable to give that. So we will discuss that also. Okay. So lots of interesting chemistry to be learned. Let's start. So before going to details, I have a small request. If you think my teaching is useful for you, please help my channel to grow. So let's start. So as you can see, this is actually, this is actually a glycol or you can say 1 to dipole. Okay, glycol or 1 to dipole. So this is 1 and this is 2. Now what happens? This is converted into this alkene. Fine. And see, this is actually this is actually reduction. So this part is reduction. So it is expected that somebody will be oxidized. See phosphorus, this is in tricoordinated. It is penta. Another thing, sulfur is more electrolyte to phosphorus. So this is plus 3 oxidation. So this is plus 5. Okay. Yes. So overall. And in case of this, it is plus 4 or better you can write. Okay, same. This is also plus 4. I should write better in this way. So, this is. Okay. So, now we'll discuss how this reaction happens. See, before going to details, I suggest you please look at the reagent. What do I mean? This reagent has carbon double bond sulfur attached to imidazole. Okay, so this is a imidazole attached system. Now, see, carbon has a double bond with sulfur. Is it stable? No. Poor overlap. Poor, poor overlap between the pi bond, poor over the pi bond between this p orbital of sulfur with the p orbital of carbon because para e orbital form between the sideways overlap. So poor overlap. This bond is not stable. Say. If you compare this bond, this carbon nitrogen bond, this is also not very strong. Why? See, if this leaves, it will leave as imidazolium anion that is resonance type. How? So, it will push here, it will go, so negative charge will come here, yes. so it wants, compared to that, see this is a very stable molecule, very stable molecule, carbon dioxide. Now you can ask me one question that said, 
Here also phosphorus sulfur double bond is there. Is it stable? No, it is not that much stable. But overall, from one unstability and two unstability is highly stable is produced. So that's why overall reaction process. Okay. So that is the advantage of this process. Okay. And secondly, see from all the reagent one gas molecule is produced. So it is expected that this gas molecule will eliminate from the reaction and reaction process. Simple logic. Actually, this is my personal opinion. I this uh, part based on my understanding. I am speaking. This is not I found in the book. Fine. So in now, what is the importance of this reaction? First of all, see if you have given such type of conversation, how can you do first? Second, this information gives a message that unstability of a reagent could result into a unique reactivity. That is okay. And driving force, as I told, based on my personal experience, this driving force explanation is my personal opinion. Okay. So let's now discuss about the. mechanism how this reaction is happening so before going to details before going to details please keep this thing in mind that if the reactants are not that much stable they are prone to reaction so that is the background guideline principle in this case okay so what happens see as i told this imidazole i anion is a good living group So it is expected that it will leave. So what happens? See, this is a dion. Better to say one two dion. So first it attacks this, it leaves. So what it result? This with this. So expect another thing. This is attached to the car. Uh, sorry, oxygen. Yeah, this is carbon attached to this double bond is attached to another imidazole. Okay. Similarly, so this oxygen has a mass charge. So in next step, what is expected that it will leave this proton to be neutralized. Fine. Secondly, similar way it will attack. And this imidazole will leave. As I explained, imidazole like anion will leave. How it's stabilized. So ultimately, what it will result? So at the end of this part, this will result in a five-member ring formation. So this is carbon. This is this. So now this proton will leave. So actually, this results in a five-member carbon ester. So this is a five-member cyclic. Better to say not carbonate, thiocarbonate ester. Uh, I all I also suggest you that sometimes you try to learn the name because in exam instead of open structure they can provide you the name. You have to derive the structure then only you can be able to achieve the product. Okay, thiocarbonate ester or thioester. Fine. So it's a cyclic thing. So one thing, whether it is cis or trans, cis or trans, doesn't matter. Ultimately, ring case for ring it is always cis. So let's consider this is A, this is B, this is C or D. If it is same side, then only the same thing will be. Otherwise. C C rotation possible. Please keep this factor in mind because it's a S P three S P three bond. So ultimately, this is in C fashion. Okay. Okay. Now what happens in next step? There is this P O M E three. So this P O M E three. So now what happens? This phosphorus has lone pair, so it can attack here. Next step, what happens? This bond opens. Comes on carbon and carbon pushes here. Okay. Next step, what happens? This oxygen is exiting its valence from two, so it will give electron here, forming a double bond. So now this bond will open up. Just I am showing, giving you one additional step. It doesn't mean it produces an intermediate. I am giving this for your better understanding. And since in this way, I can from keep everything as it is. So carbon double bond O 
O minus S P O M E three with a positive charge on phosphorus. Okay. So in next step, what can happen? This can push and it can leave, producing this. So what will be the final thing? So this is actually nothing but an alkene. So let's write this in a better way. So this is the alkene. Here it will result in CO two plus P double bond S O N E three. So this is the overall mechanism of this process for the preparation of this is the target product alkene. Okay. So now we have discussed. Now let's go to the second part where we will discuss how cis cyclooctane could be converted into trans cyclooctane. Okay. Let's discuss the second part means cis cyclooctane to trans cyclooctane conversion. Okay. So. This is the cis cyclooctane. Why cis? C double bond. These two hydrogens are same side. This and this. That's why it is cis. Okay. So what would be done? MCPBA sodium hydroxide. So what this MCPBA sodium and MCPBA done? Look at the how I am drawing this. This now join this. MCPBA is a epoxidation reagent. This is, but still these hydrogens are in the same site. So if I say this epoxy site is epoxidation in the same site, then this hydrogen should be given in the back side. This, this. In next step, what happens? Alkaline epoxy opening to get. Trans diol. I have already discussed this part in a previous video. Please visit. Okay. So this is epoxy opening under alkaline condition. So what happened? This alkali attacks from this side. If we consider, so it will open. So geometry will be orientation will be trans. Okay. S N two fashion attack you can say. Fine. Next step it is a diol. So as I told, explain the mechanism. It will. It is trans. I agree, but as I told, ring five-member ring cannot be trans. So keep this statement in mind. Five-member ring cannot be trans. Okay. So now this CC rotation will happen. The CC rotation, and ultimately this CC rotation. Previously, they were in trans. Right now, since this oxygen is in same side cis, then the hydrogen will become trans. Previously, this hydrogen was in cis. See, now they became trans. Okay. An interesting thing is that because of this rotation, the molecule is twisted. And see, this bond, this CH to this CH to this is front side, and this bond is back side. Okay. So question: Why this is happened? Why the molecule undergoes so much twist state? Because twist state means energetic, less stable. Previously it was more stable. Why? Because of the instability of this reagent. Okay. First of all, the instability of this reagent. This is a stable molecule produced. It reaction happens. Okay. So in next step, what happens? That alkene will produce so. This phosphorus, this will attack here. It will open. This bond will come here. It will open. This will go to phosphorus. So ultimately, phosphorus is produced as I told. CO two five. No need to discuss. What conclusion? Double bond is generated here. Okay. See, this is the double bond. So right now, this hydrogen, this is front side. This is back side. So they are in trans. That's why this is this molecule is trans cyclooctane. Okay, so this is the interesting point. Now some information. I told about trans cyclooctane. Okay, so 
Why I am telling specifically transcyclooctin? I could have been told about this. Uh, why that heptene means seven member cyclo heptene cyclo octene and nonine means this is a seven member ring. This is a eight member ring. This is a nine member ring. So question: Trans isomer possible? C is possible for everyone. Trans not possible for this. Okay, possible for this. Fine. And another thing: Nonine is also possible. Okay, nonine is also possible. Okay, another information. Okay, I forgot to give you. This isomer could be obtained in seventy-five percent. What is the importance of this information? Let me give you. See, this is impossible. Not possible to prepare. Very unstable. This is could be possible, but it's an energetically unstable molecule. But if you prepare non-in, this is relatively more stable than octane. Why? See, in here this part unstable. So in between, if you can put, I am not saying this way. Better you can think like that. CH two this. So if you can introduce another CH two, the ring strain reduces. So the main reason is ring strain reduced. That's why this. If you go to decane, means ten more. Now another question. Cis cyclooctane versus trans. So this is cis cyclooctane versus this trans. Who is more stable? Cis is more stable. So this this is more stable compared to this. That's why cis to trans conversion is difficult. Okay, but if reverse thing is told, that could easily be done. I have discussed cis alkene to trans alkene. So Why specifically this part is discussed because it is difficult to achieve because of the ring strain. Okay, okay. So this is the overall discussion today. So what we have learned today, we have learned today about cis means one to diol or glycol to alkene conversion. Okay. Second part application of this methodology, we have learned about this cis cyclooctane to trans cyclooctane conversion and importance of this process. Why this is difficult. Second, stability of different trans cycloalkenes. Okay, trans cycloalkenes. So this is. So this is the end of this discussion. If you find my video is interesting and useful for you, please help my channel to grow. First of all, subscribe my channel Chemistry and Mystery of Molecule, and please press the bell icon to get all the notification about every single video I upload. I prefer to upload many videos for you based on almost regular basis, so you may miss. Secondly, share this video among many people; it will be helpful for them. And most importantly, like this video and make some good comments because your good comments encouragement is acting as an inspiration for me to prepare new videos for you on a regular basis. So till now, stay happy, stay blessed. God bless you.